Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing a Windsor and Newton professional part two swatch with me video. Uh, about a month ago, we did a live stream where we went through the colors that I had on hand in a palette uh, that people have sent me in pans and I had completely just drawn a blank um, that I had these other samples that a very kind viewer sent me that I had misplaced during my move of different rooms. So I deeply apologize to this very sweet soul who sent these to me and then didn't even say anything when I forgot to include them. Today we're going to rectify that. We're going to go ahead and swatch out the non-duplicated colors here. And um, I want to thank you guys all who voted in the poll that I threw up a couple of days ago. I think it was yesterday or the day before. Um, who said that you just wanted a supplemental video. So thank you for that. We'll go ahead and get started. And then I'll go ahead and post a post on Patreon with both this scan and this scan together. So you can kind of see a full range of at least the colors that I have. I think we're gonna end up with around 50 unique colors uh, from their 96 color line. And some of those are um, limited edition colors that aren't always available. So. I hope you guys are doing well. I'm just gonna go ahead and start this off by putting a little bit of water on some of these so that we don't have to scrub them too hard. We have some interesting ones on here that I'm excited to kind of check out, including um, Genuine Rose Matter, which we saw when we took a look at, um, oh, what was it? <laughs> uh, we took a look at the Neva Calori watercolors. And I think I'm just realizing I forgot to put one on here that was not on this other sheet. Yeah, um, Thalo Blue over here we'll need to add to our new sheet as well, but I think I got the other ones. Hopefully, hopefully. Oh, we already have that one. That's gonna be the hardest part is I've already done a couple of these and I wanna duplicate them. But we'll just go through and figure that out in a little bit. I also got some brand new uh, brushes that I'm really excited about. Um, I've been painting a lot with flats lately, as a lot of you guys know, and uh, I didn't have a proper like artistic professional <laughs> um, flat brush. So I went ahead and purchased a silver black velvet. This was a long time ago over on Jackson's, but I ordered it with some Jackson's watercolors. And a couple of those colors were on hold, which means that my whole order got put on hold. So they just arrived this morning, actually, and I am excited to see how it goes. This brush might be a little bit too juicy for these swatches. And if they are, I have a secondary one nearby that I can go ahead and pull out as well. So this first color here is a color I have not seen before. It's Turner's Yellow, and it's made from PY216. Uh, I don't know much about that color. It looks kind of like a pale cadmium yellow to me. Um, it definitely has a little bit of opacity. It's soft and warm, so soft like a nickel titanate yellow, but warmer than that really cool tone. So it'll be interesting to see how that one dries. Next up we have Cadmium Red, and you guys know I don't have a lot of Cadmium colors. We did have a Cadmium Scarlet on the previous swatch sheet. I did go ahead and set up my camera exactly or as close as exactly to the same as I did for the last video. So I hope that the consistency between the two uh, is good. Of course, I'll link the other video in the description below if you didn't get to see the first part of this. So that between the two, you can go ahead and try and see as many of these colors as possible. And I already feel, I'm sorry, I was a little, little out of sorts when uh, we started this video. I hope I got all the information out. <laughs> um, I'm streaming through my streaming setup because that's what we did last time and I wanted the colors to be the same but it means I can't edit the video. So I've got one take to do this. And that's always, always a little bit stressful. Whoops. So that cadmium red there, it doesn't look too opaque for a cadmium red. 
But by contrast, next to this um, quinacridone red, this quinacridone red looks so pink. Usually this is kind of, um, it's like an interesting red that I can never quite put my thumb on between warm and cool. It's kind of almost a corally red. But this one seems more pink, but it also might just be the proximity to that cadmium red. Next, we have Permanent Rose, which is Quinacridone Rose, PV19. And this one should be able to um, put this Quinacridone Red in perspective. You can see with this Permanent Rose going down, it's even more pink than the other one, so it's setting this one back to look a little bit more coral-like. I'm just a little bit worried that uh, because of how much water this holds that the swatches won't be as vibrant and I definitely don't want to cheat Windsor Newton out of any of their vibrancy. You guys know I've been hard on them in the past but in the last live stream I had a lot of fun with those colors and they seem to do better than the times before that that I had remembered working with them. Here is the Rose Matter made from Natural Red 9. This is a fugitive color that is widely replaced by a lot of other brands these days. I know Daniel Smith recently got rid of theirs. And we saw one in the Neela Calori watercolors, and the Neela Calori one was very, um, it was much redder than it was pink or what we would normally consider rosy in watercolors. It had a lot of granulation and looked very different from this color. But this is the color that I've always associated with. I've never had PR, I'm sorry, NR9 um, in my collection before, but based on other accounts and what I had seen, this is closer to the version that I was, I was used to hearing about. I did drop a lot of water in there, so I'm just gonna put a little bit more pigment Try and balance it out so we don't get a giant back run. And I think, whoops, I think for the second row I'm going to switch over to the other flat brush that I have that doesn't hold as much water so we can see if that makes any difference in these swatching techniques. I already have the Quinacridone Magenta, so I'm going to skip that one. Here we have Ultramarine Green Shade. And the one that I did in the last video was the French Ultramarine, which is a warmer shade. So it'll be interesting to see the difference between the two of these once they dry. Let me go ahead and set this brush off to the side. Um, this other one that I have, again, brand new brush, it's a half inch Studio Synthetic Jackson's brush. So it's supposed to be the same size, which in flat brushes is the width of the brush, but the Jackson's has much longer bristles, but these are also, um, this is half synthetic, half squirrel, and supposed to mimic squirrel, which holds a lot of water, and this is a lot drier of a brush. So we should get more water control with this one. Uh, it doesn't feel quite as nice in my hand. It's uh, not weighted as nicely as some of my other brushes. A lot of the weight is in this part of the brush with less of the weight down below. So it just, it balances differently. Um, let's go ahead and stick this Windsor Blue down here. I should write the pigment number first, right? Where did my pen go for that? I had just like assumed, I guess, in my head. I'm like, oh yeah, I have phthalo blue. But that was not one of the colors that I had from the other gifted pans. So we'll make sure to put that there. Give it like a second to dry. Now we can go ahead and put this down. 
Yeah, this brush definitely feels more like my swatching brush. Although that uh, the longer bristles on it are a little bit different in terms of the way it lays down and the control you need to have. So it'll be interesting addressing to a new brush. I'm just trying to get that mass tone up there for you guys and then fade that off nicely. And then in the first one we had cerulean blue. I don't know which cerulean blue that was. I'm assuming since it didn't have a label on it that maybe it was the greener shade. This one specifically says red shade, so I'm gonna go ahead and swatch it out and we can see if there's any difference. I think this one already looks warmer. Just from my memory, um, I feel like this is a lot different from the other cerulean blues that I have in my swatch binder. It's really lovely, very rich, very easy to pick up. Um, this dot card was sent to me at least over a month ago because the last video was a month ago and I know I had it before then. Um, <sighs> time is just, it's been flying by you guys. I don't know where it's gone. It's already two weeks into the new year. I hope your resolutions or goals are still holding for you. I know a lot of people were throwing the word goals around this year rather than resolution, whichever one sits better with you. This is Prussian Blue PB27. We haven't really revisited this color for a while on the channel. At least I don't think I feel like I've talked about it for a while. There was a lot of talk about it uh, in 2018 over on Instagram and just within the artist community about the fact that it's like this weird paint. It fades in the sunlight like almost immediately, but then it'll restore or reconstitute itself if you put it into a dark closet. So I don't use it anymore, um, but it is a lovely color. I do already have Windsor green yellow shade on the other one. So next is the Terra Vert. I'm hoping that we can get enough worked off of here. This is a color that's notoriously difficult across any brand to rewet. And doing it on a cardboard dot, card, uh, dot sheet is always difficult because I don't want to pull the paper up or anything. Theirs is made from three different pigments, PG-23, uh, uh, PG-18, which is Viridian, and uh, PB-28, which is Cobalt Blue. So we've got lots of granulating soft colors in there. Uh, this green earth type of color is always very, very soft, usually very weak tinting strength. I've never seen, <laughs> I've never seen the contrary, I'll put it that way. I don't want to say never, but... I haven't personally seen it myself. It's I've heard very good for using them in portraits to balance warm tones. But again, I don't use, I don't, I don't do portraits very often, so I haven't gotten a chance to use it much. This one is having a hard time with the wash. It's like really staying where I put it and not spreading out like I would want a watercolor to. I'm on Arches paper today, just like we were last time. And whoopsie, I forgot to put my phone on Do Not Disturb. We'll do that right now. <laughs> um, so yeah, it definitely, this looks like a, it's not, but it looks like a cheaper paint on a cheaper paper. Um, but I think what that is, is that there's a lot of binder in that to kind of hold those pigments together just due to the nature of them. Viridian in particular has a hard time rewetting, so. Not my favorite, but it's okay. This one, however, though, is one of my favorites and I've never gotten to use Windsor Newton's brand. This is Paraline Green, which we've talked about a lot on the channel recently. It was the last color spotlight video, which I am Hoping to get you the final video that I owe you all uh, very soon. Uh, Venetian Red is the last one that we're doing for this past run of the Color Spotlight as a bonus episode. Um, 
But we talked about the Paraline Green. It was in my trio last year for the Da Vinci uh, project that I worked on. It's a beautiful, beautiful color. And I'm happy to see that it's just as great in Windsor Newton. Scooch up here so you can see a little bit better. I already have yellow ochre and quinacridone gold, so we're going to skip to light red, which is a PR102. This is an opaque earth color, similar to Venetian red or um, Indian red, but this one is much oranger, so more of like a terracotta type of color. I think Da Vinci actually has a color called terracotta made with this pigment. I could be wrong, but definitely looks like one of those clay pots that you'd plant flowers in. And then we have Paraline Maroon, which I know is a big favorite of a lot of viewers. I still admittedly have to say that I haven't used this much in paintings, but it is a gorgeous color. I've loved the mixes that I've come up with it. I just need to be better about finding excuses to use it, I guess. This is probably the most pigmented one we've had yet. I went down super rich. I'm just trying to dilute it so that we can get a nice fade here. Then we have raw umber, which is always an interesting one because this color can either be really, really light and green or it can be really really dark and rich. I'm a bigger fan of the darker variety that's a kind of a cool dark brown. This looks like it is our lighter version. I second guessed myself there. I was like, am I talking about burnt sienna or raw sienna? No. Okay. Raw sienna is like a yellow ochre color that tends to be more brown. This is similar to a raw sienna, except it does lean more towards green, but it's probably the most uh, neutralized version of this lighter version of raw. That's very confusing. I apologize. <laughs> if you don't know anything about raw umbers, everything I just said is probably confusing, but out of the lighter varieties that I've seen of raw umber, this is the most neutral one that I've seen but I prefer the darker, uh, deep, cool brown version, and that's the one that I have in my palette. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> then we have Van Dyke Brown, which is made from PR101 and PBK6. I'm guessing this is the more transparent version of PR101. And PBK6, I believe, is lamp black, which I'm glad to not see the um, ivory black in these mixtures. That always makes me a little sad. I've always really liked Van Dyke Brown. Um, it's not always made from the same pigments. It changes based on who's making it, but it's usually around that kind of hue. Uh, it looks a lot, in this version, it looks a lot like a burnt umber. We've got that warmer tone. Then we've got sepia, which is made from PBK6 again and PR101. So actually this is the same two pigments here except flip-flopped. So there's more black in this version. And sepia is not a color that I had used almost ever in my painting. Uh, because a lot of versions are made with that ivory black that I prefer to keep off my palette. However, I've been using it more recently with, oh, I forget what palette I was using. I, I had a palette that had it in it and I have just been loving using it recently. And so I'm, I'm coming around to the sepia. And this is a really beautiful version. Kudos, Windsor and Newton. And then we have Mars Black. And Mars Black, I believe, could be wrong on this, I believe it's Lunar Black in Daniel Smith. 
if it's the pigment I'm thinking of, it's the very textural granular one, but I could be mixing up the pigment numbers. It's a very, very flat black gray color. Not very interesting in terms of its hue, but if it heavily granulates, it would be nice to add to, ex uh, to other colors like Daniel Smith has lunar blue and things like that where they've mixed the lunar black in with other colors to make them more interesting. On its own though, I wouldn't say that this is a particularly compelling color for me at least. But yeah, you can see some of that granulation starting to come out. I'm just trying to, to smooth it out there. And you'll continue to see granulation as that dries. So then we just have four limited edition colors. Um, so I didn't pre-wet these. But this first one is Yellow Titanate um, in Schmincke. This is their... Is it? Oh my gosh, I'm totally blanking. It's this one. Nope. It's this one. <laughs> uh, titanium gold ochre. There we go. I knew there was gold and titanium in there. Couldn't figure out the order of the words. Um, but I found this pretty early on in watercolors. It was sent to me by Schmincke when they had their new 2017 colors that came out. Uh, gosh, that feels feels like it was just the other day, but it was... Quite, quite some time ago now. Um, but anyway, I really enjoy this color. It is opaque and it's a bit more yellow than a yellow ochre is, but it's really, really fun, especially to mix into skin tone-like colors. Um, you can use it as, as base tones for skin colors. It just has this really beautiful warmth to it. And w Windsor Newton's looks a little bit more yellow than the one that I have from Schmincke, which is a bit softer and peacher, peachier. Uh, it is on my main palette. That gives you any idea of how much I do enjoy using it. I might just be biased though, because I do love the number 24. <laughs> Um, this is also a color I love that I didn't know that Windsor Newton offered. It is limited edition, so I don't know how... I don't think it's still available. I think it used to be available, but this is PBR 25, which is a rich red brown. Daniel Smith has this color. It's called Permanent Brown and um, Mission Gold has it and it's called Red Brown. Mission Gold was the first version that I had and had tried. This one feels redder than the other ones did. Um, but maybe it'll dry with more of a brown shift. Then we have Quinacridone Violet, which is a, a standard color for both Schmincke and Daniel Smith. For whatever reason, Winsor Newton decided to make it a limited edition color, according to this anyway. I didn't double check the the chart or anything, but this is a very cool purple. PV55. I don't use it very often. Um, yeah, I, I don't use it very often. It's, it's a nice color, but I usually find that if I do need a violet, I usually reach for dioxazine violet. Or if I want a warm violet that's pre-mixed, I go for Rose of Ultramarine. Or I just mix my own. Let me know what your favorite use for that color is. And the last one, I'm curious to see what it looks like. So it's small blue, which Daniel Smith used to offer. They stopped carrying it. It's no longer, or maybe, maybe they still have it. It's not on their dot card anymore. It was really weak, just like their lapis lazuli is. 
This one already seems uh, more pigmented, but the thing I'm curious about is that it's made from PV15, and that's typically uh, like an ultramarine violet, I believe. And this is certainly more blue. It looks like an incredibly warm version of ultramarine or cobalt blue. So I will be interested to look into this one. Sorry I didn't do so before recording this video, but um, yeah, so if you like ultramarine, but want something even warmer than that, um, you could look towards this one. So thank you again to the viewer who sent this to me. I'm sorry that your card got separated from your swatches. They sent me some other ones to um, like Daylor and Rowney and some other uh, specialty colors here and there. And I'm very, very grateful. I'm sorry they got misplaced. I'm very excited to be able to add them to the Windsor and Newton swatches. So let me go ahead and pull this over here. Hopefully we can take a look at them all on screen together. You know, these are still wet and drying. But between the two, um, we're covering, let's see, there's 30 here. We've got 12, so 42. We have a little over 50 colors, but the ones that are marked with asterisks are the limited edition colors. So that's not included in this 96 colors that I have down here um, that they typically offer. So we're still missing a, a fairly sizable amount of colors, but between the colors that I have here, I could make a perfectly valid palette. We've got a nice range of yellows that go from a cool opaque yellow. Here's this one actually reminds me, the Turner's yellow reminds me a little bit of Schmincke's version of the yellow Titanate. This is definitely more yellow and this is more brown, but one second, sorry. <coughs> But it's got that feel to it that, um, I don't know, it's like opaque and warm and peachy. Uh, so it's, it's an interesting color. I'll be excited to research that one. We've got our cadmium red that actually sits probably right over here. So there would be cadmium scarlet and then cadmium red would be a little bit cooler than that before you head into the Windsor red here. We've got quinacridone red, which there's a bloom here. That was my fault with the brush. So... Sorry, quinacridone red, but that's that. It's pinkishy, but it's got a little bit of that orange glow to it. We've got permanent rose, which would sit between carmine and quin magenta. This is my favorite cool red to work with um, in a standard palette. I also love Daniel Smith's carmine, as you guys know, but a lot of brands don't carry that one. The Rose Matter Genuine is a really pale, soft, rosy color that I would understand a botanical painter really wanting to use for their paintings, but again, that is not a light, fast color. We've got Ultramarine Green Shade, and I want to put that next to the Warm Shade. Let me take a sip of water because I feel a little cough coming on again. <coughs> But you can see here how different they are. So this is actually really helpful. Um, their French ultramarine is very, very warm, leaning towards violet. And then we've got our cooler ultramarine green shade here. So this one fits right between, I think, the French ultramarine and the cobalt blue. Then we've got our cerulean blues, which I'll put next to each other as well. And those are also different. So this one has more green in it. This one has more red in it. This looks like a sky here. This is the closest color to a sky blue I think I've ever seen in a watercolor. Um, that changes depending on where in the world you'll live. You'll hear different painters from different countries referring to their sky being different shades of colors. But for California, this is the closest color to our sky that I've ever seen. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, this one looks less opaque than the other cerulean blue. Then we've got Prussian blue, Terra Vert, which did dry with that rather unpleasant texture. Just not my cup of tea. Um, we back on screen here. There we go. We've got a Paraline Green, which is gorgeous as always. Light Red, which is that, um, it it's definitely semi-opaque. It's not fully opaque though, but it's a terracotta-y type color. The Paraline Maroon is gorgeous. Um, 
totally worth having around. I think it's very similar to this Indian Red. And maybe that's why, or sorry, Indian Red Deep, the PBR25. Maybe that's why they didn't keep this particular color in their lineup because the Perlene Maroon is so close to it. We've got our Raw Umber, which is a cooler light brown in this particular range. The Van Dyke Brown would sit somewhere over here, definitely darker and cooler than the Burnt Sienna, especially in Windsor Newton's ver uh, lineup because they have the really orange version. But this is uh, what kind of matches like Daniel Smith's Burnt Umber. Um, then we've got Sepia, which is a gorgeous, dark, cool brown, kind of similar to the dark brown, which is a limited edition color, but this one has a little bit more warmth to it and definitely more opacity over here. This one's more transparent. Mars Black is still drying, but definitely has that texture, so I'm pretty sure that this is that Lunar Black from Daniel Smith that we've seen before. <coughs> I'm sorry, guys. And I think it would look really cool if you mixed it into other colors and get that special effects. We've got the Windsor Blue, which is a Thalo Blue. It would sit over here, a little bit cooler, uh, or sorry, a little bit warmer than our Thalo Turquoise, a little bit more towards red. Then we've got Yellow Titanate, which is similar to a Yellow Ochre, uh, the limited edition Indian Red Deep that we already talked about. Quinn Violet would sit right between Quinn Magenta and Windsor Violet. And Smalt Blue is that really warm, almost purple, similar-ish to ultramarine type of color, or cobalt blue type of color, that um, maybe also would be useful for, for floral painters. I'm trying to think where you'd use that. I think it might look nice for certain shades of lavender flowers. So... I hope that you guys enjoyed that. Again, I am sorry for, for not making it in the first round, but thank you guys for being understanding. I hope between the two videos uh, that you get a nice feel for the Windsor Noon paints. I'll post them over on Patreon so you can see them. Whether or not you're a patron, I'll put it as a public post. And thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video, which I'm hoping, don't hate me if it's not, I'm hoping it's going to be the Venetian Red Color Spotlight for you. So until next time, happy painting and... Uh, I'll see you next time.